Welcome to another Tech Help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I'm your instructor, Richard Rost. This is part three of my Load Multiple Images series. If you haven't watched parts one and two yet, go watch those first and then come on back. All right, so at the end of part two, we got our code to the point where we can loop through all of the files in the import folder and display what they are. And that's a really easy loop right there, okay? All right, next up, we have to figure out what kind of file it is. Is it a JPEG? Is it a GIF? Is it a bitmap? Only certain types of files will work as images in your Access database. You don't want to allow Word documents or Excel spreadsheets, right? So we'll need two more variables. We'll need dot position because we have to look at the file name and find where the dot at the end is. So we find the file extension, right? The dot position as along. And then knowing the dot position, we can get the extension as a string. Okay. All right. So inside our loop right here, we're going to say dot position equals. Now I want to find the period, but I want to start from the end of the file name, right? Because if we start from the beginning, there could be periods in the file name itself. So we're going to use the in string reverse function. So it's in string reverse in the file name. And I'm looking for the period, right? The first period starting from the right. Now, if the dot position is greater than zero, then we have a valid extension, right? So extension equals, now I wanna take the L case. It's just easier if everything is lowercase to, for doing comparisons and stuff, right? And I wanna find the mid of file name, comma, dot position plus one. Okay, let's unpack this. Now, recently, I just personally discovered that you could use the mid and not specify the third parameter to start in the middle of a string and get the whole right part of that. That blew my mind. I used to have to use the right function and then calculate the length and subtract the length. It was just a pain. I talk all about that in this video. Go watch this. It'll, it might blow your mind too. I don't know. It was, it was news to me. So this will basically say, go to that dot position plus one. So we don't want the dot, right? Give me the mid of the file name from that position to the right, all the way to the end of the, of the string, and then give me the L case of that. So that should give you .gif, .jpeg, .whatever, okay? Otherwise else, now this is where we do have a problem. That means that there's no extension file. So you got, might have a bad file in here. You want you know the human to take a look at it. So I'm gonna actually message box this. It, sometimes for critical errors that you, know, you wanna stop processing, I will use a message box and then exit the sub. So cannot determine file extension and tell them what the file name is. All right, and then exits up, we'll get out of town. All right, you got a bad file in your folder there, pal. All right? All right, so let's see what we got now. Status the file name and let's put in here the extension, extension, and we'll put in here extension like this. We'll see what it looks like. Let's debug compile and let's take a peek. Ready, click. All right, and there's all of our extensions. Let's zoom in so we can see it better. All right, found the JPEG, found the GIF, found the GIF, found the JPEG. Everybody looks good. Okay, let's throw a bogus one in there just to test our, our error checking. Where's my folder? I think I closed my folder. Let's open it back up again. Open. And let's make, uh, let's make Kip not have an extension in here. We'll just do that. Kip, yes. And yeah, of course, Windows is going to yell at you. All right, let's see what happens in our code. Ready, go. Uh, cannot determine the file extension of KIP, yes. And that stops execution. It's exactly what I wanted. And let's put KIP back so he's... KIP, yes. Come on. Come on. There it is. Dot GIF. Are you sure? Yep. Okay, there we go. And while we're at it, before our code gets too complicated, let's put some commenting in here, right? Determine file extension. So we know what kind of file we're dealing with. And here we go. Okay, we'll put in here valid extension found. No extension found, right? And these aren't necessarily for other people. These are for you in the future. I wish 10 years ago me would have commented my code as good as I do now. <laughs> I used to be like, oh, no one else is going to have to look read this. But then you go back and try to read something that you read 10 years ago and you're like, what is this? Okay. All right, now we're going to only do stuff with this file if it's of one of the extensions that we like okay so only process valid extensions valid image extensions 
And for this, we're going to use a select case. Why? Because it's easier to write than a, an if, then, if, then, else, if, then, else, right? It's just, it's just like this. Select case extension. Okay, we're going to say case, and you can put all the extensions that you want in a single line. So BMP, comma, GIF, comma, JPEG, comma, for you Apple users, JPEG, like that, Alex, and whatever else you want, PNG. Okay, and then down here, case, else, anything else, we're just going to do nothing, not a valid image, and we'll, um, we'll status unknown file type and put the file name in there. If it's something like a text file or something else that doesn't match, right? And select. All right, so let's move this up into here now so we can only see this get displayed if it's a valid extension type. All right, we'll put in here valid extension. All right, save it. Let's give it a debug compile. Let's come back out here. Let's throw something else in here that uh, we shouldn't have in here, like a text file. All right, there, I just copied a readme.txt into that folder. Okay, so back out here and import images. Okay, let's see what we got. Started here, gif, gif, valid, 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 valid. Oh, there we go, unknown file type readme.txt. Okay, so the user is going to be notified that they got an invalid one in there. So that's working. All right, that all looks good so far. Close that. What's next? Well, let's clean this up a little bit. Instead of saying valid extension, let's say, let's just do this. Let's do, um, let's do importing and file name. That's clean enough, right? That's good enough. Um, we know we want to increment our counter at this point. Counter equals counter plus one because we've, we've, we're importing another one. Okay. Now I want to, when I copy it, I want to generate a new file name for this file because what if I've already got a kirk.jpg in there and it's a different picture. So what I like to do is I like to assign either a random file name or something based on a time and date stamp to make sure that you can't have multiple files with the same file name. All right, so we're gonna make a new file name. You could, random numbers are fine too, but I like, I like my method, watch my method here. So we're gonna need another variable for new file name as a string. I've, I've been trying to get in the habit of maybe declaring these closer to where they're first used, but ah, old, old habits die hard, I've always, declared all my variables at the top of a subroutine. Uh, there's benefits to both ways, but that's just how I do it. Okay, so in here, we're gonna set up a new file name, and I'm just going to make it so it's a date time stamp with the counter on it. So it's gonna look like this, format now, right now, right? In this format, year, month, day, hour, minute, seconds, Okay, so that's the exact timestamp. And then I'm gonna add onto that counter. So even if you're, if you're doing an import and there's you know, eight files, you're gonna have the same date timestamp because all eight of them might import in less than a second, right? So you add the counter on the end of it to make sure those are all unique. Chances of someone else doing this again with a second run within a second are astronomical. So if you wanna add a random number onto the end of that, go right ahead. I think this is perfectly fine. Okay, then on the top of that, we have to also add dot and then our extension. We know what type it is, right? A GIF, a JPEG, a whatever. Okay, so that's our new file name. So let's put right here, right? Create new file name based on date time stamp. Okay. Now we're going to copy the file to the images folder with that new file name, okay? And that's gonna look like this, file copy, import path, and file name, comma, images path, and new file name, All right? We know where the import path is, it's this thing, right? Import path, where are you? Right there, it's the current database import folder. And the new place is going to is the images, right? Images folder. And so we just tack on the old file name, which we got up here, and the new file name, which we just made. So we're gonna copy database folder, you know, image import folder, kirk.jpg is going to become images folder, you know, 202408, whatever, blah, 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 dot jpeg. And that's what that's gonna do.
All right, you're ready to test it, see if it works. Save it, debug, compile, come back out now, and ready, click. All right, let's see what happened. Let's open up the import folder. All right, these are still here. We're gonna delete these eventually. We'll get to that, but let's go check out, check, blah, blah, blah. Let's check out the images folder now. And oh, look at that. There's all the files and they got their newly assigned file names. See that? They're all based on the timestamp with the counter at the end and Picard's in there too. Okay, now I'm gonna delete these guys, except for, I'm not gonna delete Picard because I want Picard in there. All right, delete those because we're, we're not done. We're gonna, be, we're gonna be working with these again. Okay, we're gonna be copying them over again. Next up, after we copy it, we're gonna delete it. But before we do that, we wanna verify that that file is there. All right, we'll do a little error handling to make sure that the file copy operation was a success. Then we'll delete it and we'll check to make sure the delete actually works too, right? And then after all that, we got to add this as a record to the database and we'll start doing all of that in tomorrow's video. Actually today, this is being released Friday, August 23rd, 2024. So the next video will be on the 26th, which is Monday. So tune in Monday, same bad time, same bad channel. Or again, members, you're going to watch it right now. But. That is going to be your tech help video for today. I hope you learned something. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you on Monday. Enjoy your weekend and take care. A special thank you and shout out to our diamond sponsor, Juan Soto with Access Experts Software Solutions. They're manufacturing experts specializing in Microsoft Access and SQL Server. Juan is a 13-time Microsoft Access MVP. Check them out at accessexperts.com. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up and post any comments you may have below. I do try to read and answer all of them as soon as I can. Make sure you subscribe to my channel, which is completely free. Click the bell icon and select all to receive notifications when new videos are posted. Want to learn more? Click the show more link below the video to find additional resources and links. YouTube does a pretty good job of hiding it. It's right down there. See this part of the description here, right? The name, the video's up here. There's a little show more down there, right down the bottom. It's kind of hard to find. But once you click on that, you'll see a list of other videos, additional information related to the current topic, free lessons, and lots more. And YouTube no longer sends out email notifications when new videos are posted like they used to do. But if you'd like to get an email every time I post a new video, click on the link to join my mailing list. And you can pick how frequently to get emails from me, either as they happen daily, weekly, or monthly. Now, if you'd like to become a paid member of my channel and receive all kinds of awesome perks, click on the join button. You'll see a list of all the different membership levels that are available, each with its own special perks, including my extended cut videos, access to my code vault, lots of VBA source code in there, template downloads, and lots more. I'll talk more about these perks at the end of the video. Even if you don't want to commit to becoming a paid member and you'd like to help support my work, please feel free to click on the tip jar link. Your patronage is greatly appreciated and will help keep these free videos coming. I got some puppies to feed. But don't worry, no matter what, these free tech help videos are going to keep coming as long as you keep watching them I'll keep making more and they'll always be free. Now, if you really want to learn access and you haven't tried my free access level one course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access, including building forms, queries, reports, and more. It's over four hours long. You could find it on my website or on my YouTube channel. I'll put a link down below you can click on. And did I mention it's completely free? The whole thing free four hours go watch it and okay okay a lot of you have told me that you don't have time to sit through a four-hour course so I do now have a quicker Microsoft Access for Beginners video that covers all the basics faster in about 30 minutes and no I didn't just put the video on fast forward <laughs> but I'll put a link to this down below as well now if you like level one level two is just a dollar that's it one dollar and that's another whole like 90 minute course Level two is also free for paid members of any level, including supporters. So if you're a member, go watch level two. It's free. 
Okay, want to get your question answered in a video just like this one? Visit my Tech Help page and send me your question there. Members get priority, of course. While I do try to read and respond to all of the comments posted below in the comments section, I only have time to go through them briefly a couple of times a month, and sometimes I get thousands of them. So send me your question here on the Tech Help page, and you'll have a better chance of getting it answered. And while you're on my website, be sure to stop by my Access Forum. We've got lots of lively conversations about Microsoft Access and other topics. I have a fantastic group of moderators who help me answer questions. Shout out to Alex, Kevin, Scott, Adam, John, Dan, Juan, and everybody else who helps out on the site. I appreciate everything you do. I couldn't do it without you. Be sure to follow my blog, find me on Twitter, and of course on YouTube. Yeah, I'm on Facebook too, but I don't like Facebook. Don't get me started. Now, let's talk more about those member perks if you do decide to join as a paid member. There are different levels, silver, gold, platinum, and diamond. Silver members and up get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, one free beginner class every month, and some other perks. Gold members get all the previous perks, plus access to download the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos, plus access to my code vault where I keep tons of different functions that I use, the code that I build in most of the videos. You'll also get higher priority if you do submit any tech help questions. Now, answers are never guaranteed, but you do go higher in the list for me to read them. And if I like your question, you got a good chance of it being answered. You'll also get one free expert level class each month after you've finished the beginner series. Platinum members get all the previous perks plus even higher priority for tech help questions. You get access to all of my full beginner level courses for every subject, and I cover Lots of different subjects like Word, Excel, VBA, ASP, lots of different stuff, not just Access. These are the full length courses found on my website. You get all the beginner ones. In addition, once you finish the expert classes, you get one free developer class per month. So lots of training. And finally, you can also become a Diamond sponsor. You'll have your name or your company name listed on a sponsors page that will be shown on each video as long as you're a sponsor. You'll get a shout out in the video and a link to your website or product in the text below the video and on my website. So that's it. Once again, my name is Richard Rost. Thank you for watching this video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something today. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you again soon.